So uh, for the past six months, I've been living in a van. Uh, that van. Yeah. So I thought I'd talk about that a little bit and just uh, talk about, you know, how it's gone, how things have gone uh, good, how things have been difficult. And uh, then I'll probably, you know, if I have time, I'll probably answer the million dollar question, you know, uh, how long do you plan on living in that van? People ask. Well, you know, I promise I'll, I'll answer that, uh, that question. Well, cleared that up, I guess. So, I should probably say straight away that I had a little bit of difficulty wrapping my head around making a video like this, a six-month video about talking about the good and bad things about the last six months. Uh, but I did decide to go ahead and do this with the idea that uh, there's probably quite a few people out there that are kind of on the fence about moving into a van. And so probably most of my... Uh, comments will be kind of directed toward those people. Also, you know, the people that I started the channel for, which would be, you know, my friends and family that don't live anywhere near me, uh, just kind of giving them an update on how things are going for me. So I've been getting a lot of comments lately, uh, especially lately about, uh, you know, people telling me that I'm too cramped because the van is too small. I don't sleep well. Uh, you know, things like this. And so I think that this is probably, you know, six months in, this is probably a good time uh, to address uh, those, those kinds of, those kind of comments. So I've, I've kind of gone back and forth about some of the things that uh, are, have been the hardest to deal with. And I think I've come up with kind of three things that have been uh, the most difficult things to deal with and I think first on the list would just be dealing with the weather and I know I have done some complaining about the heat and it really is just that I it was really just complaining on my part with the vent fan which I really should have turned off before because it messes up the mic um, with the vent fan and the vent that I drilled uh, in the floor, um, I find that really up to about 93 degrees Fahrenheit uh, is maybe not comfortable, but completely fine uh, to be in the van, sleeping uh, in, in the van. Now, it does get hotter than 93, um, so I'm not saying it's, it's always comfortable in here, but it, at no time have I ever felt that it was dangerous, except for about three days during the summer when it got to be about 125 degrees, which I think is about 51 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, and I wasn't able to stay in the van. I did have to stay with some friends. And, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I've had uh, some friends that uh, have always offered a place for me to stay. Um, and, you know, on the hot days, they're always texting me and saying, hey, are you okay? Uh, do you want to come stay with us? Uh, so, like I said, there's really only been about three days uh, that I've really thought that it was kind of maybe marginally dangerous uh, to stay in the van. So, uh, all in all, I think that the weather has not been that bad. Now, I am a little bit concerned with... with what's going to happen when it gets cold, but <laughs> cold is, is kind of a relative term because, you know, where I live, we never get freezing temperatures. Uh, but, you know, it's probably, we'll, we'll probably see 40 degree, you know, 40 degree Fahrenheit temperatures here. Uh, and I do have a Mr. Heater, Buddy Heater, so in the next six months, I'll probably do another video and I'll probably be complaining about, uh, about the cult, but uh, I'll try not to complain too much. But I think the worst of it is 
the number one worst thing I think dealing ha having to deal with something in the van is is just the weather. Um, if it's hot outside, it's going to be hot inside. If it's cold outside, it's going to be cold inside the van, and it's just something you have to put up with. You know, um, it's probably easier to, at least with my setup, it's probably easier to uh, heat the van than it is to cool the van down. Uh, but, you know, it hasn't been terribly bad, uh, all my complaining aside, anyway. Uh, the second thing, and I hate to put this as number two, but uh, dealing with not having Wi-Fi has been kind of an issue. And, you know, dealing with temperature extremes, you know, that's a comfort, comfort thing. Uh, Dealing with not having Wi-Fi, that's kind of silly, and I hate to put it as number two, but, you know, we we really, I think in just a short amount of time, have gotten used to having a constant Wi-Fi signal, uh, and when you kind of untether yourself from Wi-Fi, and there are some times when you're, when you're searching for Wi-Fi, like when I go to upload videos, uh, it's kind of an issue. Um, I did change my cell phone plan so that makes uh has made it a little bit easier not having wi-fi i don't have to worry about um about going over on on my cell uh, plan which which was an issue for the first two or three months that i was in the van uh, so i hate to put that as number two again but it is kind of a difficulty thing there have been times where i have purposely gone someplace where i knew i wasn't going to have uh, a Wi-Fi signal or even cell service like when I went to Slab City. Uh, I knew I was going to be off the grid completely and uh, and that, that was cool, you know, that was cool knowing that nobody was going to be able to contact me, I wasn't going to get called into work. Um, so there are times that I do relish that uh, aspect of it, but you know, in, in a day-to-day -day thing, um, it is kind of an issue, uh, and it's something I'm still kind of working with. Um, the third thing, and I could probably put this as number one or number two as things that are difficult that I've that I've had difficulty with, is I am not at all a minimalist. I've never been a minimalist, and I've really never wanted to be a minimalist. But when you when you move into a van, especially such a small van like this, um, you have no choice, right? I mean, I, I had no choice. Uh, I had to become a minimalist just because uh, that's part of the deal with, uh, with living in a minivan. Um, that's something I'm still working with. I do, some of you know, uh, I do have a couple of bins that I store at a friend's house. Uh, tools mostly. Um, there's also some kind of heavy clothes since our winter here is about four weeks long or six weeks long. Um, it's not something I like. Those aren't things that I like carrying around in the van just because I never use them. Um, but that that's probably the the three kind of big three kind of big things that have been uh, the hardest to adapt to. Um, as for things that have gone well, I think that because I have spent just so much time before I bought the van and then uh, as I was building the van, I wasn't in any hurry to get the van built, at least not initially. Uh, it, I did set a move-in date when I had the van kind of half built, uh, and then I did get a little bit... Uh, a little bit crazy there in the last the last four to six weeks two months maybe uh, about trying to get the van done um, things that I you know just trying to slap things together um, but I, I did spend so much time just researching uh, and I, I, I've been lucky in that I've always had a lot of spare time uh, that I could spend just countless hours, you know, on Google and, and YouTube researching things. And I think that 
that really helped me transition into the van. You know, there, there was a lot of, lot of thought that went into the bed. Um, there was a lot of thought that went into uh, my kitchen area. You know, initially I, I, I didn't want to have a refrigerator. I was just going to deal with a cooler and ice. Uh, but having all that time, and it was probably about a year and a half of time that I was planning, uh, that really made me think more about what I really needed uh, to be comfortable. And I know a lot of people would not consider a fridge to be something that they need. Uh, but just being honest with myself that, you know, it really came down to really honestly and truly to be comfortable. I was going to need a sink. I was going to need a refrigerator. I was going to need a cooktop uh, along with the other things, you know, comfortable bed and ventilation and, and, and that. Uh, so I think that that was probably the number one thing that I did right was just being honest with myself and what I, what I was going to need uh, to be comfortable. I probably need more things than most people. Well, more things than a lot of people, I should say. Uh, even though the van is really simple, uh, you know, my electrical system is, is just 12 volt. Uh, I just have one single propane cooktop. Uh, I've got a very small fridge and a single size bed, but that's a lot more than a lot of vans have. And, uh, it, you know, if you're, if you're looking around on, on YouTube, so it's a lot more than, than a lot of people have. So I think that, well, I, I should say that that's probably, there's probably two things that I did right. And that, that was just the one It's just being really brutally honest with myself and what I was going to need to be comfortable. And I've been getting a lot of comments from friends and family and, and also strangers that I meet and that say, you know, you live in that thing. Uh, the guy that I bought propane from uh, the other day, you know, he says, that's too small. It's too small, it's too small of a van. And I just had to laugh. You know, I said, it's, it's not been too small. Um, at, at no time have, have I felt that I didn't have enough space. Uh, at, and the thing that I found a little bit surprising is I've slept better over the last six months in the van than I've than I've slept in I don't know how long, um, and I think there's a few things to do with that. I think that it's just uh, it is a comfortable bed, and I do like sleeping in a small space, uh, and I like sleeping in in a space that's really dark. So without having any windows and having the blackout curtains. Uh, I can black it out in here, and um, I think that that helps uh, my sleep. The other thing is, you know, I had a lot of worry about money and making my rent and making my vehicle payment, and that's not something that I have to worry nearly as much about now. So I think that that's kind of helped my sleep, but, uh, you know, it... it it, it's it's those several things combined that that have uh, it have made made this a really comfortable spot for me. Um, the other thing is just because the van is so small, I really was hoping that that would force me to be outside more um, and not just kind of squirrel away and watch Netflix and YouTube videos all day and all night uh, on my days off and. That has that has actually been um, uh, a benefit to having the small van. I think um, it does force me to get out, and I do feel much better when I do get out and just be outside. And it doesn't matter if it's hot or cold, uh, but just being outside in the sun and moving around uh, has been a huge, uh, a huge thing for just kind of my mental well-being. So all in all, I would say moving into the van has been really, really good. Now, there is one thing that I was talking to a friend who is kind of in a similar situation. Uh, 
she doesn't live in a van or RV, but she is kind of uh, mobile and hasn't really had a place of her own for quite a few years now. And she was pointing out something to me in that when you choose this kind of nomadic lifestyle, you do kind of disconnect yourself with uh, a sense of community. You know, um, I realized that there's days that this last weekend I drove up to the mountains and it was a spur of the moment thing because I can do that now. I, I needed to pick up some parts in Riverside area, kind of LA area, and uh, I need to do laundry and I just thought, uh, you know, I'd look to see where a good laundromat was and there were none in my area, but there was a really nice one up in Lake Arrowhead, which is a really nice kind of resort area. Uh, that I don't think I've ever been to in my whole life, even when I was a kid, even though I've lived in Southern California my whole life. So I had that opportunity to just go, but nobody knew I was going up there. You know, most of you know that I live uh, in one spot most of the week because I have a regular job, uh, kind of a nine to five job. But you know, when I'm when I'm gone, when I do something like that, you know, my friends here don't realize that I've gone somewhere. Uh, and then, you know, if I am with friends in L.A. or if I am with friends in San Diego, uh, you know, if I'm not there, they don't expect me to be there all the time. So it is kind of a strange situation that I've put myself into, even though I do have a home base uh, in a sense. I don't really have a real sense of community because I am kind of here and there uh, all the time. And while I do like that, it is kind of an odd feeling uh, just kind of being unplugged from any kind of sense of 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 neighbors and, and community and, and having people that are watching out for you. So that is something that I am still kind of dealing with. Uh, and for the first, you know, four months or so, it wasn't something that I, I had even, you know, had even crossed my mind. Uh, but it was something that, especially talking to my friend who's been in that situation, uh, I have been thinking more about. And I, I think it was very astute of her to, to bring that up and talk to me about. Because there has been something that has been kind of bothering me about about van life. And I think that that's it. Because really, you know, everything is better uh, across the board. Uh, Money-wise, sleep-wise, uh, you know, just my over, overall sense of, of uh, satisfaction with, with just living in general. Uh, but that is kind of the one kind of funny thing that nobody really talks about much. Uh, but I think that, you know, it, it kind of makes sense when you look at uh, a lot of social media. You know, you see a lot of people that are, that are on Twitter and, and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And I think that it is it is because we are kind of looking for a little bit of sense of community because we have taken ourselves out of that kind of community aspect that most of us kind of take for granted. Even if you don't really talk to your neighbors next door or down the hall, uh, you know, they still are there. Uh, you know, they're just a, a short walk away uh, where now I don't have that. So I think that that is something to think about if you are thinking about moving in, into a van. But even still, I, I don't think that it is a big concern. It's just one of those little gnawing things that, uh, that you realize that in, in that year and a half of planning that I did, that was nothing, you know, that was nothing that I thought of. You know, I thought of the solar panel and overthought the solar panel and overthought the battery and, and the refrigerator and, and all, all of that. But I never did think about that community aspect. 
Um, so that's something I'm still thinking about. And hopefully in the next six months I'll do another video and, and talk about that. Uh, but uh, probably to kind of finish up, since this is really going long, you know, how long do I plan on spending uh, in the van? How long do I plan on living in the van? As far, you know, you could probably tell from the tone of, of this video, it, it's been so positive that I don't have any plans at all on making any changes. Uh, I, I can see living in this van, this small van, uh, easily for the next six months. Um, and maybe in another six months, I'll, uh, I'll, have, a, I'll have a change of thought, of, of heart uh, uh, on that. But uh, as of right now, um, this was a good thing. And I think that really the best thing that I did, the absolute best thing that I did, was not putting off moving into the van. I almost, almost, almost didn't move in the van. I, the van was half done, and I, I was really getting antsy about a lot of things. Uh, So I started looking on, on Craigslist about, uh, you know, looking for a room to rent. And I, I, there was a really short period of time that I thought, uh, I'll just put off moving into the van and, uh, and I can finish it later. I can move in it, in, in it later. But it really wound up being a good thing that I just stuck to my guns and, and stuck to my move-in date and moved in the van. So um, I don't know if that helps. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, I'm sure I could go on and on uh, about this for <laughs> another 20 minutes. But uh, I would say that this has been really, really positive. And uh, if you're on the fence, you know, I think you probably know yourself and know what you really want to do. And if, if you're leaning toward moving in, in, into a van, I, I say do it. Don't put it off. Just do it. That's it.